How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Gear 101. So a little happier video today because the last video was on the top five worst bows of 2020 and you know some people don't like hearing negative things about a bow that they bought. But today if your bow is on this list that's a good thing because it is one of my top five bows for 2020. As always before I get started I just want to say that this is all my opinion and take it for what it's worth. I'm not being biased towards any brand. I'm letting you know how I truly feel, but bows are subjective. So what I think is good or bad might not be what you think is good or bad. So keep that in mind and let's get started. Number five best bow for 2020 is gonna be the Matthews VXR. Now this bow is really similar to the Triax, which I was a big fan of because of the how dead it was. The VXR is just as dead. They say that it's more dead. I don't know, I couldn't really tell. The, the Triax was super dead in my opinion, but the VXR, definitely the most vibration free of any bow at ATA without a doubt. However, it had one of the more stiff draw cycles. So all things being equal, say 70 pounds, 60 pounds, it doesn't matter. All things being equal, the VXR has probably one of the more stiff draw cycles. The back wall is a little spongier than I like, and honestly, the grip feels like it's just easier to torque, in my opinion. Um, again, my opinion, but it just seemed a little harder to hold steady. Uh, it seems like you could really torque that thing pretty easily. That flat back grip, I'm just not a big fan of it. And then the reason that I got rid of the Triax, the reason the, the VXR is number five on my list, just the balance. I'm not a fan of the way it balances. A little top heavy just makes it awkward to carry. Um, but honestly, that's it. If you bought a VXR, you're getting a great bow. Um, it's just not the one for me. My number four bow is going to be the Expedition Escape. These bows really surprised me. I had actually never shot an Expedition before. I was pleasantly surprised. It's one of those bows that it wasn't the best at anything, but it also wasn't the worst at anything. Um, fit and finish looked really good. The patterns looked great. The grip was a pretty good grip. Um, not the best, but for me, it actually felt pretty nice. Draw cycle was a little on the stiff side, I thought, but honestly, it was still pretty smooth. It wasn't abrupt or anything. Good valley, pretty solid back wall, um, minimal vibration, and pretty quiet. So it's honestly one of those bows. It was just, it's like a jack of all trades and master of none type deal. That's the Expedition Escape, in my opinion. Number four is going to be the Obsession Evolution line of bows. So the Evo 7 was the one that I shot the most. I did try the 6, but 7-inch brace height has always kind of been my favorite. So three things come to mind when I think of the Obsession Evolution series bows. The first is going to be the draw cycle this year. It's a really good draw cycle. Um, it loads everything right at the beginning, but at the beginning of the draw cycle is when you have the most strength, basically. So you can pull 70 pounds and it doesn't feel nowhere near 70 pounds. That was pretty impressive to me because while it wasn't so smooth all the way through it, it the way it loaded up right at the beginning, I just found easier to draw than a lot of other bows. Uh, the next thing is when you get it back, it's got a super solid back wall. Um, it's, it's just rock solid. I mean, limb stops are gonna be rock solid, right? And the last thing is obsessions are always quiet and they go pretty darn fast. So the fact that they can get speed out of their bow without sacrificing how loud it is, is pretty impressive to me. Honestly, that bow was really close to getting my number one or number two spot. It just come down to a few things right at the end on that last day. I just went back and forth, back and forth, shooting all the other bows, and it kind of fell to the number three spot, and I'll let you know why in the end of this video. So my number two bow is going to be the Elite Cure. Um, this bow is cool because it has a lot of cool technology. They basically have it set up to where you can adjust the pitch of your uh, limbs and tune it that way. Uh, it's really, really super simple and fast. They actually had a spot set up where you could paper tune the bow um, at their booth. So they would purposely put it out of tune and then let you shoot it and you know show you how if you just move this little bolt, it tunes it perfectly every time. Um, so that was really cool. So a lot of good technology. The other thing, Elite always has a great draw cycle. However, I didn't feel that the Cure had as good of a draw cycle as what like the Ritual 33 had. Um, so that kind of knocked it down a little bit for me, but it still has a great draw cycle. The, um, the back wall is still super solid, uh, which I really like. On the shot though, a little bit of vibration and a little bit louder than some. So for those reasons, 
didn't make my number one spot. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, and that is the number one bow, in my opinion, for 2020, and that is the Bowtech Revolt or the Revolt X. For me, I love a comfortable bow to shoot. I want a bow that I can just shoot all day long if I want to, one that doesn't wear you out to shoot it, and that's the Bowtech Revolt. Without a doubt, this is the smoothest draw cycle of any bow for 2020. It's honestly not even in the same ballpark as pretty much every other bow out there. Um, it was just a blast to shoot it. Now, typically I'm a limb stop kind of guy, um, but Bowtech's cable stop system this year is super strong, um, super firm. There is a little bit of sponge because you know it's not a hard surface that you're going up against. It's still a cable, but man, it's as close to a limb stop as I think you can get. Very little vibration. So when the Realm series came out, I was not a fan because I thought it had a lot of vibration and I didn't like that yoke system, how it come out so wide and everything. This system just looks so much more sleek and streamlined. There's very little vibration. It's really quiet. And it, honestly, it's just such a blast to shoot. Botex fit and finish has really gotten good in my opinion over the years. I know like four or five years ago, I thought that their, their colors and stuff just wasn't as nice looking as some, but this year, they look really good. They got that new Woodlands pattern that looks awesome. It's just kind of the old school camo pattern. It looks really, really good. Honestly, it's probably my favorite finish for any bow this year because it just looks awesome. I do want to give two honorable mentions. One is going to be the Prime bows this year, the Black Series. Those bows were kind of like the Expedition for me. They were really good at a lot of things, but they weren't great at anything. Um, and honestly, it just wasn't good enough in anything to put it into the top five for me but they are a great bow. Um, the, the bows this year, once you get into like the top seven, eight bows, it's really just pick and choose because they're all so good at so many different things. Um, but for me, the Bowtech just had that smooth draw cycle that I'm looking for and it just won me over. The other company that I was really impressed with that I hadn't got to shoot before was Athens. Um, they had a really, really good system. I think it was what the Ridge 32, I wanna say it was a great bow really liked it super nice people which brings me to one of my last points and that is um, I like to support a company that has really nice just awesome people behind it working for them you know they employ just good people easy to talk to um, and Bowtech man those people were so nice so helpful um, any little thing that you wanted uh, you know you didn't hesitate to ask if you needed something changed they would jump right on it, all smiles throughout the whole show, which isn't an easy thing to do because there's a lot of people there wanting to shoot these bows. And the fact that they can just stay happy and positive and just super friendly and helpful throughout that whole thing uh, really means a lot to me. That's actually one of the things that um, Obsession kind of lost me on. They just didn't really seem like they cared to be there. Um, they was just like, here's your bow, shoot it. Just talking to each other rather than talking to a potential consumer you know they're talking about partying you know last night and what they did last night and it's like you know we're here to shoot a bow you know help me teach me show me what's new about this I could care less you know how drunk you got last night and finally the guys at the Matthews booth were super rude um, not very helpful granted it was one of the busiest if not the busiest booth so they were just trying to swap you know mods and drawings and weights and just doing all this stuff so I get it you're under stress but I feel like there's a level of professionalism that you need to maintain with these shows. Um, and they just didn't have it in my opinion. I was not impressed with those guys whatsoever. Hey, I almost made it a whole video without making people mad, but I'm sure those last few comments definitely got under your skin. But again, it's my opinion and I'm gonna tell you how I feel. I have no reason to lie to you, but for me, definitely the top bow of 2020 is gonna be the Bowtech Revolt. Let me know in the comment section what you have bought or what you're looking at purchasing for 2020. Maybe you're sticking with the same bow that you've had since 1998. Nothing wrong with that. Probably should put some new strings on it though because that's always a good thing. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to be setting up my new bow and you know you can probably guess what that bow is going to be. But stick around, stay subscribed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video. Share it. Do whatever you want to with it. Thumbs down, I don't care. Maybe you didn't like it. You probably didn't. It's kind of the norm these days. But hey, until next time, y'all be safe.